I'm starting off with coconut oil. It's unprocessed, it's natural, good, good stuff. And I just put a big spoonful in there, not much. And we're just going to fire it up and throw in some onions. For onions, what I'm going to make is a Middle East dish. We don't know what to really call it, but it's spicy meat with garbanzo beans and spinach. And I use lots of spinach, just by the handfuls or a large bag of it. Uh, put broccoli in it too sometimes because Warren can recognize the broccoli, but he doesn't always see the spinach because he doesn't like spinach. And we don't like to tell him that spinach is in this, but actually spinach is the main green thing but when you look at the dish itself if you combine it with broccoli he'll see the broccoli and then he thinks he's safe he never knows okay let's see if we can throw something in there whoa yeah okay so let's get our onions in there we're gonna let those onions get started to cut the onion, slice them lengthways. Now the reason I didn't cut these off, cut them off later, is because I just saw on TV where it wouldn't make you cry. And evidently it's right, it doesn't make you cry if you leave the caps on. Who knew? All these years. And that's all it took. Okay, so sort of have your onions cut that way. And I use a whole onion. I'm going to be cooking with a uh, nice red meat, uh, no hormones, no injections, no antibiotics, shot by my husband. Uh, one pack is mule deer from, I don't know, Wyoming, Utah, somewhere. And the other pack is um, sausage. And the sausage is um, white tail deer. Now onions, this meat does not need any tenderizing, but onions are the natural tenderizer. This is a bunch of garlic I just chopped up. Uh, you can never get enough garlic because you know there's always a vampire out there waiting on you. So we want to, that's not as much salt as you think, but sea salt, a little bit more garlic just to make sure. We're going to put in some cumin. We're going to put in some red pepper. I am, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to start browning this up. And yes, you can do this in a skillet, you can do it in a big pan, I just happen to do it in a wok. A wok will really cook fast. So getting that meat nice and brown. I'm telling you, if your husband's a hunter, or you know hunters, it's a good thing. Because we have wild turkey, we have goose, um, we have um, sick of deer, white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk. So when we want dark meat, we've got it. And we know that it hasn't been messed with. It's just out there free-ranging it. And my husband is a good hunter. What we're going to do is put in tomatoes. You can use canned tomatoes. Now what you see me putting in there is the Garden Bounty. Um, this already has onions. It has uh, fresh tomatoes. It has um, eggplant. Good Lord, it has just about, oh, every kind of squash. If you have a garden, you know that there's only so much you can do with everything and you have so much left over and you've given so much of it away and, and um, you're not going to waste it. So I put it in a great big pot 
and I put lots of um, sweet basil leaves and just everything and then I cook it way down and I freeze it so that was one container of the frozen now I'm going to turn this down a little bit and I use this tomato sauce for spaghetti and everything now what we're going to do is we're going to give this its Middle East flavor. Well, I want to put in some tomato sauce. Just because I'm crazy about tomatoes. Now let's throw in some garbanzo beans. Okay, that's two cans. Got them on sale. Nice organic chickpeas or garbanzo beans, whatever you want to call them. Now what we're going to do is our Middle East flavoring. And I like things spicy. Things hot. So, uh, you know, I don't see a tablespoon of this or a tablespoon of that. I have no idea. It's just grab a bite a handful and do what you do. Now this is, this is cumin, and I love cumin. Cumin has such a good smell, and it's so good with rice. I'm just going to throw in some more garlic. Here's some uh, red pepper. We're going to get that in there, or cayenne. I also like to put in a little bit of uh, coriander seed. There's something about coriander seed that just sort of makes your uh, mouth sparkle makes my mouth sparkle. When you bite into it, it explodes with flavor. Alright, now we're going to let that cook down some. And then what we're going to do is put in the green. Well, I'm just going to close that off. Going to leave that open. Okay, so we'll just let that do its thing. Okay, Tate, what do you think I should do next? Do you think we should feed it to the kitty? Huh? No? Okay. Okay, so we'll just check and see. It's been about 10 minutes. So you want to... Just give it a stir. You're letting all these flavors cook up. Boy, does that smell good. Woohoo! So just let it keep on keeping on about 10 more minutes. I would say let it stay in this stage all together. 20 minutes to a half hour, then throw in your veggies. Maybe just 20 minutes. Okay, so we put all our vegetables in there, and we stir them around. We have our, our spinach. We have our spinach. <laughs> we have our broccoli. And they're looking good. And then you can just turn it down on medium. Uh, one of the best ways to serve this, you can have it by itself. One of the best ways to serve it, though, I think, is over rice. And with rice, I like to make an um, Asian-type rice or a Middle Eastern-type rice. So many different ways to prepare it. Uh, Warren never liked rice, and when I started making rice here, he just said, give me some more of that. So it's good stuff. Um, with this particular dish, I 
would use a, uh, you can use a brown rice, you can also use a white or jasmine, and um, I would use uh, lots of cumin, a touch of uh, nutmeg, a little bit of uh, cinnamon, maybe a half a teaspoon, and um, see what else would I put in there. Uh, some salt and black pepper and uh, that's the kind of rice I would make and then this you can put over your rice. Alrighty I'm just gonna let this cook on medium just let all those flavors mash in. I wish you could smell it in here. Woo! Okay.